Last touring car action of the day at Brands Hatch, and it might well be the best. Round six of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship reverse grid race. Let's go back to Tim Harvey and David Addison. Last race of the day, mix of tyres in terms of the medium and the soft, mix of hybrid allocation, jumble grid. What more do you want? I think this is going to be an absolute humdinger <laughs> of a race. It could be a BTCC classic. I'm really looking forward to it. Impossible to pick a winner, uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Sutton and Ingram can do coming through from uh, midfield. And you've got a man on pole position that hasn't had a win before. That's Ronan Pearson, who's had a pretty mixed day, admittedly, but he's going to be a man to watch uh, as the two formation laps get underway then for this last race of the day, round six of the championship, uh, and Ronan Pearson leads the cars away. Everybody is there. Big puff of smoke out of the back of Jake Hill's BMW, I notice, as it sets off, uh, but he has got it on the grid after that steering drama of race two. The field turning its way, then now down through Paddock and uh, up towards Druids then. Ronan Pearson is the man on pole position, and Aaron Taylor-Smith is alongside him. They're both on that soft tyre. Lining up third is Mikey Doble, and Aidan Moffat also on softs. Is fourth ahead of Dan Camish, and another soft shod car, the Hyundai of Tom Chilton. Seventh on softs, Dan Robossum, then it's Adam Morgan who's got rid of his softs. Ash Sutton is on the soft tyre from ninth. Tom Ingram is on the soft, and he's alongside. Then it's Colin Turkington and Sam Osborne. Nick Halstead is 13th ahead of Daryl DeLeon, Andrew Watson and Josh Cook with the last two rows of the grid comprising Chris Smiley, Rob Huff, Jake Hill and Scott Sumpton. So as we've been seeing all day, there are people out of position, people in a big hurry trying to make some progress uh, through the field. So the cars wriggling their way uh, along Cooper Strait at the moment. There is Sam Osborne. Before we go racing, let's have a quick word with Sam. Um, Sam, considering that on Friday some bloke flung your car into the gravel trap at Paddock, it, it's not done you bad this weekend, has it? Yeah, no, so I've got to look after the, the girls. So, um, yeah, uh, it's not done as bad at all this weekend. <laughs> What's it been like in the car? Because we've been complaining up here it's hot, the fans are getting a sunburn, it must be very unpleasant in the car. <laughs> and it's a physical circuit this as well isn't it so it's pretty demanding on you yeah there's no rest for the wicked around this track it's it's full on there's there's no straights to regather um not only for us but for the cars i mean um, the temp i've been having a real real problem with over here especially in traffic and now you're on the medium tyre as well, so you've got to look after those, but you're not going to be able to catch the soft. So this is a, a race for points, is it? Yeah, we're just going to see what comes of it. We, uh, we hope to make a bit more on, on the soft tyre, but it is one of them. We've got what we've given, and uh, we've just got to make the best of it. We'll leave you to it. Good luck, Sam. Cheers, thank you. Sam Osborne then, starting 12th on the grid, and uh, that car looking immaculate, considering, as I say, it was uh, in the gravel on, on uh, Friday afternoon. I don't know whether we mentioned that during the course of the day. But you could see just how difficult it is to talk while you're driving the car. Indeed. Well. It's so, indeed. Yeah. you know, yeah. that's driving at a slow pace. Um, and I'm glad to see, I'm not glad to see there have been <laughs> other punctures, because <laughs> at, least, at least I'm in is. a good group, aren't yeah, I? Right. In terms of hybrid deployment, this is how people look. Now, remember that you take the number of laps based on where you came across the line in the earlier race. So five laps for Turkington, six for Ingram, seven for Sutton, eight for Morgan, nine for Robottom, ten for Chilton, eleven for Camish, and everybody else either side of that little group has 12. So Ronan Pearson, Aaron Taylor-Smith, Mikey Doble, Aidan Moff at the front of the grid, they've all got those 12 laps. And remember what Aaron Taylor-Smith said to Louise at the start of the day after race one. He was happy with 10th, he had a plan, he was working towards it for race three. Here we go. He doesn't look so daft now, does he? No, he really indeed. doesn't. Um, so fair play to him. Um, but can he take uh, advantage of this uh, this front row position? Certainly, uh, in free practice one, they were the two Vauxhalls were first and second quickest on the soft tyre. Um, but uh, if no one else was running, it doesn't tell us too much other than that they had good pace. But I honestly. I could pick a winner, but let's see what happens at the start. The start is always super important, but we've got a lot of fast cars um, towards the sharp end of the grid. 
The last time Aaron Taylor-Smith had a win was Rockingham back in 2016. So if he can turn a win out of this, uh, it would be uh, a great result for him and for Adam Weaver's uh, Evans Halshaw with Power Max Racing team. But you've got Team Bristol Street Motors, Roman Pearson on pole, and he would, would desperately like a first British Touring Car Championship win. What about for the back of the grid, 18th Rob Half, who uh, felt that after uh, the pit stop and the damage, it just wasn't worth continuing in the early race. So far back would he have been? Uh, and Jake Hill from 19th. There's, again, a lot to look for. Oh, yeah, Josh Cook, 16th. Oh, yeah, Andrew Watson, 15th. So, again, there's going to be a charge from the back, a battle at the front. It's round six of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. It's 24 laps, and it's go. And a good start made by Aaron Taylor-Smith, who is away like a stab rat to take the lead on the way up towards Paddock Hill for the first time he's got a better start the road of Pearson and to the outside line goes Aidan Moffat to try to unsettle and unseat Mikey Doval he's out wide over the curb but he is ahead as they go up towards Druids but that was an absolute perler of a getaway from Aaron Taylor Smith well that's the first part of Aaron Taylor Smith's plan perfectly executed a great start from the outside of row one and he's off and away he is indeed so Aaron Taylor-Smith leads the way. Having said all of that, Rodan Pearson's kind of regrouped and gone with him. And you can see that in third place, it is uh, Aidan Moffat with Mikey Doble fourth. And Rodan Pearson goes for the race lead with a proper send up the inside, and he's done it. Fantastic move. Wow, where did that come from? That's absolute peach of a manoeuvre. Well done, Rodan Pearson. Absolutely. Lovely to see. Aaron Taylor-Smith, with respect, has been around the block a few times. He knows how to defend, he knows how to race, but that was a great move. And now to the inside line goes Aidan Moffat. It could be rather Scottish, this. It's a bit Celtic at the moment. You've got Scotland, Ireland, Scotland in the top three, but Aidan Moffat would dearly like to go to second place. And, of course, ATS wants his lead back. Definitely. This, is, this sets the tone for the race, doesn't it? On board the Pearson. Move. On board, looking backwards, but he manages to turn the car tight, delay the race. Look, there wasn't even a cloud of blue smoke from a brake lock-up. Neat manoeuvre. Neat manoeuvre. It's not often you see a car breathe in, but you did there. Rodan yeah. Pearson squeezes by, and he will lead up to the end of that two as well. So it wasn't the best start, certainly not compared to Taylor Smith, but he's worked his way around that. Big, big slide there from Rob Half. Now, remember that he is for this race uh, on the harder tyre, the medium tyre. Ronan Pearson on soft leads, Aaron Taylor-Smith and the gap seven tenths of a second. In third, it's Moffat. Dobell is fourth. Chilton is up to fifth and down to sixth has gone Camish. Morgan's seventh. Robotham is eighth. Sutton is ninth. And a ten-second penalty to Nick Halstead. That might well be for an out-of-position start, because I can't imagine he's accrued track limit penalties that quickly. No, he couldn't have done that. No, definitely for out-of-position on the start or a jump start. There's Adam Morgan going through on the inside to put himself uh, back ahead of Dan Robotham. Seventh and eighth they are, and now Sutton has a go at his teammate as well. And Robotham is on the soft, Sutton is on the soft, but Morgan is on the medium. So in theory, those Fords should be able to vault ahead. Yeah, I think uh, Robotham may be just bringing his tyres in a little bit more gently, but uh, Sutton, no such uh, thoughts in his mind. He just wants to go forward, and while the cars are closely bunched at the start of the race, it's the best opportunity. Leaders go by then. Uh, Ronan Pearson is getting away. 1.2 seconds to the good now. This is a really impressive drive early in the race. I'm not saying it's Alan Dusted, far from it. But you can see the gap from Taylor Smith, from Moffat, from Doble. Chilton fifth, Camish in sixth place. And a real cue developing behind Adam Morgan there on that harder tyre. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it, Aaron Taylor Smith could actually do uh, Pearson a really big favour here if he drives aggressively and defensively to hold the others up. This is on board with De Leon. Um, he is uh, running in 12th place, and that's Turkington in front. So just shows it to get how close they are. Looking up the inside, great move. Well, no, no respecter of uh, championships or wins today is Daryl De Leon up the inside of Turkington. And Andrew Watson with the door open for him gets the Toyota's nose in there. De Leon squeezes him towards the grass. Turkington's on the outside line. Uh, over the line here comes Jake Hill then as they run up towards Paddock Hill. Bam, but Ronan Pearson looking good up front. Where's Jake Hill's progress brought him up to? Only 18th. That's not a happy car. No, definitely not. Um, De Leon is on that soft tyre, and Turkington clearly want, didn't want any part of that uh, action, did he? Well, he's still on the medium, of course. Turkington uses softs in race one. And he got the two work Toyotas getting themselves together in the background there against Daryl De Leon. Andrew Watson just ahead of Rob Huff there. And now, as Watson goes ahead of the Cooper, he puts the uh, Duckham's Racing with Barter Card entry between him and his teammate, Rob Huff 
not being able to work his way through the traffic as easily in this race on that medium tyre, but the door opens, does it on the inside, he's going to have a go at De Leon as we look back up towards the line, but Daryl De Leon is making that car very wide and he's proving to be a very feisty little racer. Yeah, but at some point, uh, Turkington got back past. Morgan, big lock-up, Sutton, a place gain, that now puts him up into seventh place, Ash Sutton. Up front, though, Ronan Pearson's getting away, and he's now two seconds clear of Aaron Taylor-Smith. This is Sutton again. Up the inside with the uh, the soft tyre working perfectly for him. Morgan actually with a lock-up himself because he was offline and had to go over that bump, and the BMW didn't really like that. Aaron Taylor-Smith hanging on a second ahead of Aidan Moffat. And where's your best medium shod car? It is fifth, it's Mikey Doble. Uh, so as the leaders come through, Ronan Pearson doing a very impressive job up front. He's continuing to build that gap as he goes over the timing line once more. Through goes Taylor Smith in second place and Moffat third. And Moffat is getting a driving standards flag now for the track limit zealotry. Uh, you've got Chilton fourth, Doble fifth, County sixth, and it's Sutton, Robo, Ingram and Morgan to round out the top ten. Yeah, and the gap was 2.3 seconds. Let's watch that gap at the front as the laps progress. The other one to watch is uh, Sutton's progress. He's uh, one and a half seconds behind teammate Kamish. Um, Ingram is uh, uh, another eight tenths behind, but with uh, Robottom, Sutton's teammate, of course, in between them. So Robottom isn't going to do Ingram any favours, is he? No, and you just saw a shot of a very disgruntled Jake Hill. He's 18th and just not being able to make progress. There is the... Uh, Laser Tools racing with MB Motorsport BMW. In fact, he's got himself up into 17th now at the expense of Sam Osborne, but it's just been a, a horrible day for Jake. Yeah, fastest lap uh, was done by Pearson on lap four at the moment. And so he leads by 2.3 seconds. Driving standards flag Rob Huff now for track limits. So there is Pearson with pretty much everybody else having a playmate, but he is pushing, pushing, pushing. 17 laps to go, though, in these temperatures. And looking after the soft will be crucial as there. Kamish gets up the inside of Doval, goes fifth, and takes over the lead of the medium tyre battle. That was the one he wanted to win, wasn't it? Yeah. This is on board with Darrell DeLeon once again with uh, Rob Huff in front. Huff already on a warning for track limits. And DeLeon uh, probably relishing racing against the former world champion. And staying with him as well. So Huff then is on the back of Morgan now, who is fading on the medium, isn't he? And we're getting a replay there of how Sutton was able to get himself up past Mikey Doble, who had a little bit of a slide at Surtees, and by the time they got out of McLaren into clear ways, the door was open. Yeah. Uh, so both the Napa racing cars have gone through on uh, Mikey Doble, but his teammate Taylor Smith still in second place. And this is Daryl De Leon still staring at the back of Rob Huff, who is in... 13th place, and he's on the back of Colin Turkington, who also had a spell in the World Touring Car Championship. Comes then now along Cooper Strait. Andrew Watson is ahead of uh, fellow Northern Irish driver Colin Turkington, and then behind them is Rob Huff. Ingram to the inside of Doble. Through he goes on that soft tyre. Another place gained for the uh, champion of two years ago, Tom Ingram, the 2022 champion, and the man that came to the weekend as a double race winner. Gains a place, although in fairness, Mikey Doble fights back and has Ingram got a problem? I thought the car was a bit smoky over yeah, the line. It is. It's getting smokier as well, yeah. isn't it? He's got his place back, in fairness, but what was the smoke all about? It's gone for the moment. Yeah, um, it looked, it's probably bodywork rubbing on the tyre because if it was oil or something like that, you'd expect it to continue. Yeah. But it looks okay now, doesn't it? That's for the no, moment. Except when he breaks. It's, it, when he breaks, it definitely touches. Okay. So his last lap was a decent one, and we saw him gain the place anyway, but just trying to work out whether that right rear wheel was looking as though it was moving ever so slightly. I hope I'm wrong, but uh, uh, old eyes and all that. Tom Ingram, for the moment, presses on, carries on. Kamish coming through now with Ash Sutton on his tail, medium tyres versus soft tyres. Uh, once Ash gets onto his tail, there's probably not a great deal Dan Kamish can do to repel him. No, and it would make sense for, for Sutton, uh, to Kamish to probably let his teammate through, wouldn't it? Although he'll probably remember race one when uh, um, Sutton jumped ahead of him. A big lock up behind, that was Tom Chilton. Tom Ingram, wasn't it? Ingram, Next sorry, in Ingram. Yeah, yeah. So that was, we know what smoke that was all about from Ingram that time, but it just makes me wonder whether all is well in that car, because suddenly, OK, that was a lock-up, but is he having to overdrive it, or is there a problem that created the uh, lock-up there? There's a driving standards flag for Sutton now for track limits, and there's the gap on the inside after you, Claude. Yeah, that was definitely uh, 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 Kamish allowing his teammate through, but you're right. 
Is that smoke from... And then look, is that, is that a puncture? That's Ingram. That's problems for Ingram as well. He slowed right down. I'm not sure it's a puncture, but this is, has big championship implications in terms of points, doesn't it? So Tom Ingram had that big lock up at Druids. And it is a puncture. It is indeed left front. And he's going to limp it to the pit lane. So Tom Ingram, flat tyre, left front. He was about to be given a driving standards flag to add insult to injury. He locked up at Druids. He came out of the corner. It was OK at that point, but presumably deflating. And then at Graham Hill Bend, I think that's where it goes pop. Because he goes yeah. wide well, that's, the road. That's the right front, isn't it, we're looking at there. It was actually yeah. the left front that was punctured. But it's another soft tyre puncture, isn't yeah. it? It is a fragile car tyre. I don't think that was the right lap, in fairness, because we'd seen yeah. the car accelerate out of the corner there, whereas it was slow on Cooper Strait on the lap we picked it up. So driving standards flags now, not only to Ingram, but also to Rowbottom uh, and to Colin Turkington, would you believe, for track limit abuses. But Ronan Pearson is leading by three and a half seconds. Now, they'll be a bit nervous at Team Bristol Street Motors. Ingram, soft tyre, puncture, race leader, Pearson, soft tyre. Same team, have they got the same setup on the car? Did they start with the same pressures? Exactly. They'll certainly be fragile on the radio telling Pearson to stay off the uh, off the curbs as much as possible but if there is any damage done to that tire it will all have already been done when the pressure was low indeed so well there he is hard at work Ronan Pearson then trying to look after the car Ingram is back in the race incidentally so he's going to try and salvage something out of this if he can like the fastest lap point for example but Ronan Pearson comes up across the line he's got 12 laps to go 12 laps to nurse maybe and he's looking cool calm and collected inside the car isn't he uh, the lap times are still good um, he's uh, still lapping faster than Taylor Smith behind him Jake Hill on the attack against Daryl De Leon to get himself up into 14th place job done going up towards Paddock Hill Bend remember it's points to the top 15 but the BMW uh, admittedly, it's on the medium tyre, so it was never going to calm its way through the field, but it's, it's not been mega progress. Roman Pearson's on the hybrid at the moment as he tries to pull away from the rest of them, and he's got a gap of 3.7 seconds. He wants to be as far up the road as he can be as the battles rage on behind. So we could be on for a first-time winner here in Ronan Pearson. Well, he's got hybrid to use. He's got eight laps of it, so you might as well use it. Um, I'm sure he'll save some for the end as well, but uh, if we count down to the number of laps to go and he's still got hybrid, he could use every lap. And Aidan Moffat's in the pits as well. Now, I'm looking at the car and it doesn't look like it's a tyre, so maybe there's something more sinister for Aidan Moffat. Uh, as there you see diving in towards Paddock, Mikey Doble, and he's now dropping back, isn't he, on that medium tyre. He's got Andrew Watson on mediums behind him, and Andrew, in fairness, is having a good run here. He's not on the favoured tyre, but he's chipped his way up the order, bearing in mind that he started 15th, and now he's attacking for seventh. Yeah, Mikey Doble's definitely not got a good setup underneath him in this race. Um, we know he's better than this, and uh, just hasn't quite got the car as he likes it, for sure. But Watson, look, his car looks a lot more stable. Will he go up the inside? No, there's a block. Doble positions his car nicely halfway th across the road. Ronan Pearson goes through. Aidan Moffat, we understand, a loss of power for whatever reason. So Moffat is effectively out of the race. Pearson is leading by three seconds, and he's done the fastest lap, and he's got the lap leader point. So great drive thus far. Nine laps to go as you look at Doble versus Watson. And this is for the unofficial second place in the medium tyre class. And Doble, pole position at Silverstone last year, Ginetta champion, BMW champion, is giving former GT racer, Le Mans racer Andrew Watson, uh, plenty to think about because Andrew can't find a way past his teammate of last season. Yeah, and here comes Turkington right into the party, arriving very quickly at a rate of knots. He's got momentum with him. He'll want to try and get past quickly, make some moves quickly. Maybe if uh, Watson can open the door, Turkington will go through as well, and behind Turkington is that half Morgan Cook Smiley group. Says indeed, but Ronan Pearson is way out clear. He's already started lap number 17, three seconds ahead of Aaron Taylor Smith, and then Tom Chilton for the podium, uh, which will be quite something because Andrew Watson makes a real dive on the inside of Mikey Doble and says, I'm coming through. So Mikey Doble has to back out of that. Andrew Watson goes by and now waits to see what Colin Turkington can do. He puts the BMW on the outside up at Druids but no way around there, into the corner, what about out of it to Graham Hill Bend? If he stands his ground, the road will come to Colin on the inside line, that's exactly what happens, job done. Yeah, nice move, nice classy move as always, just what you expect from Turkington. And uh, poor old Mikey Doble's sl can slide down, the order continues. 
Next man up behind him is Rob Huff. Indeed, so uh, all of these cars, don't forget, are on the same type of tyre. They're all on the medium, so what you're looking at now is, if you like, pure pace, isn't it? And the, the hybrid being factored into it as well. as Bob Moffat and Aidan Moffat out of the car, out of the race. I mean, the face says it all, doesn't it? Aidan would be a lousy poker player. Yes, he would indeed. Uh, um, he wears his heart on his sleeve, and oh. I like that about him. Oh, Darryl de Leon's pulled off um, with a problem at the back of the pits. Yeah. So, another retirement. Right. Um, it's hot and testing out there, definitely. Not just for the drivers, but for the cars as well. It was a brand hatch in very hot temperatures a few years back, wasn't it, where the Hondas seemed to struggle across the different teams. Uh, and uh, we've got, as you can see, a number of cars in strife at the end of a long and hot day, as here Tom Chilton's podium finish is not guaranteed because Ash Sutton has caught him. Sutton up from ninth on the grid. It's still Ronan Pearson in the lead, and we've got six laps to go before he might be a first-time winner in the BTCC. But Sutton will have been told by his engineer, Tony Carosa that Ingram is not going to score points or many points at all. Um, he's in 19th, so out of the points. So he will have been told that. At the risk of being picky, he oh, will he's get got one point. Lap. Fastest lap, yes. <laughs> and that was about all he could salvage out yeah. of after that. And so Ingram, with a new tyre and a clear road ahead of him, bangs in the fastest lap. And at the end of the year, we could be talking about that as absolutely crucial to the outcome of the championship. You never know. You never know. So Ingram, 19th, out of the points for the positions, but gets the bonus point for the fastest lap. And he's not done yet. You never know what might happen up the road. We've only got six laps to go, less than that now, as the race leader heads to the line. But Ronan Pearson, it is up front from Taylor Smith and Chilton. But you can see Ash Sutton is right there behind him. Now, look, second, third and fourth. A proper battle pack. And Chilton on the hybrid tries the attack. Goes to the inside line. Aaron Taylor Smith closes the door. There's contact. Chilton barging his way up the inside as Taylor Smith tries to close the door. Here comes Sutton up the inside as well. Hyundai goes through. Ford goes through. And ATS drops back to fourth. Uh, well, that uh, made it easy for Sutton, didn't it? It was a last-minute lunge. The car was bouncing about out of control almost we'll see it again now look how he dives to the inside over the bump there's a little bit of contact there they get sideways they both manage to hold it together but uh, I don't think uh, ATS is going to be too happy about that I thought Chilton was sideways even before the move was properly on yeah. and he slid into Taylor Smith and that opened the door so that might get looked at I don't think Aaron's going to be awfully impressed by that Tom will say oh it's good hard touring car racing uh, and in the meantime, now that he's got the place, he's pulled away and Sutton goes through with Aaron Taylor-Smith and looking to try to fight back if he can up towards Paddock Hill Bend. Well, it's an angry and, uh, uh, Aaron Taylor-Smith using the hybrid, isn't it, to try yeah. and fight back. But we've seen over the years, Aaron is a good, feisty, hard racer. He won't be phased by Ash's reputation. He wants to be on that podium if he can get there, or get back there. Uh, and then behind them, look, there's Dan Camish banking points for fifth place, Ching. And in sixth spot, Dan Robottom on the softs, who you might have expected would have got ahead of Camish on the mediums. Yeah, that graphic shows you the amount of laps used of hybrid. So in terms of those left, um, Pearson has four laps left. Chilton only has two, Sutton still has four, as does uh, Taylor Smith behind him. So um, it's worked out perfectly for Pearson. All, he's not using hybrid, but the three cars behind him all do, all using it this lap. Right there, out of Paddock is Ronan Pearson. He's got less than three laps to go. His last lap was in the 49s. He's still pushing as the Powermax Racing team looks on to see how Aaron Taylor-Smith is doing. They would love for him to be on the podium, but it's looking a bit unlikely now because Sutton ain't for budging. No, he's, uh, he can mount a, a resolute defence. Roman Pearson turning his way up towards clearways. This will be the end of lap 22. Two to run after this. And as Barry Plowman, who engineers Tom Chilton's car, looks on, we could be on for a 1-2, of course, for Team Bristol Street Motors here because the Hyundais of Pearson and Chilton uh, will be if you like, compensating for the disappointment of Tom Ingram, who's behind his teammate Nick Halstead. So you've got one and two, 17 and 18 for the Hyundais, but this could be a really great way for Justina Williams' team to end the day. Yeah, it'll be a wonderful result for Accelerate. They'll be very disappointed about uh, Ingram's final race, having saved his soft tyres for race three. Um, he'll be losing out points, and Sutton, of course, is in third place, his big rival. Yeah, indeed. Assuming everything stays to the end as it is now. There's Ronan Pearson with a lap to run at the end of this. Now, remember Donington last year and Dan Lloyd, it ain't over until it's over. No, especially with these, these temperatures yep. and the soft tyres, do not count your chickens until the, very, until the cars cross the flag. Indeed. Cross the line, taking the flag. 
Now here, Colin Turkington has pulled away from Rob Huff once more and he's still on the back of Andrew Watson. The race leader, though, has just gone on to his last lap, and that is Ronan Pearson, who has driven super superbly, it's got to be said. Uh, Tom Chilton is four seconds back in second place, and Ash Sutton is third. Fourth, Aaron Taylor-Smith, Dan Camish fifth, Dan Robottom sixth, and here for seventh, Andrew Watson and Colin Turkington going up towards Paddock. Sam Osborne across the line, and he is up into 14th place at the expense of Mikey Doble, who's dropping back but then Doble breaks later and retakes the place, and Osborne has a cheeky dive to the inside, but all eyes are on this man. Ronan Pearson, in only his second season in the championship, was mighty impressive last year, not only in terms of pace, but as a team player, sacrificing himself at Knock Hill to help Tom Ingram gain points in the championship, and he now comes up towards not only the final corner, but a first win in the British Touring Car Championship for Ronan Pearson, a tremendous drive. Pearson wins at France Hatch, Tom Chilton will make it a Hyundai 1-2, applauded home by team manager Marvin Humphreys. So it's Ronan Pearson from Tom Chilton for Team Bristol Street Motors first and second. Ash Sutton is third, Aaron Taylor-Smith fourth, Camish fifth, Robottom sixth, then it's Watson, Turkington, Huff and Morgan to round out the top ten. Josh Cook takes 11th, Jake Hill 12th, uh, so it was a decent effort from the back of the grid ahead of Chris Smiley, Sam Osborne and Scott Sumpton gains a point for 15th. Poor old Mikey Doble faded to 16th, he really struggled on that medium tyre as the race went on. Nick Howell said he's going to be 17th and Tom Ingram 18th, but he does get a point for the fastest lap of the race. But right now, they're all celebrating this man's first win and a great drive by Ronan Pearson. He deserved that. Yeah, my congratulations to him. It's fantastic. He's had some great pace ever since he came into this championship and he's paid his dues, he's learned the craft and that was a fine race. And do you know what the decisive move was? That fabulous move on Aaron Taylor-Smith at the end of lap one up the inside at Clearway. That's what gave him the gap to control the race, um, save his tyres, save his hybrid, a fabulous move and a well-deserved victory. So, Ronan Pearson wins round six of the championship ahead of Tom Chilton and Ash Sutton. Aaron Taylor-Smith fourth ahead of Dan's Camish and Robottom with Andrew Watson seventh, Colin Turkington eighth with Rob Huff ninth and Adam Morgan completing the top ten. Aaron Taylor-Smith though taking another independent class win. Josh Cook up to 11th, Jake Hill to 12th with Chris Smiley, Sam Osborne and Scott Sumpton rounding out those that bag points. Mikey Doble was 16th ahead of Nick Halstead. Tom Ingram next after a pit stop and we lost Daryl De Leon and Aidan Moffat as well. So after three really interesting, really exciting races and not a uh, battered car too much in that last race for a change. The championship looks like this. Ash Sutton is now two points ahead in the championship for Colin Turkington. And Tom Ingram, who led at the start of the day, is down to third. Jake Hill's fourth ahead of Josh Cook and his teammate Aidan Moffat. Tom Chilton seventh from Dan's Robottom and Camish in this order now. And Adam Morgan, it is, who completes the top ten. But the reigning champion leaves Brands as the championship leader.